Hey guys, it's Duncan here. Today I'm going to be talking about the Trade Station radar screen. The first thing to understand is what is the radar screen and, and what does it do. Basically, it's a real-time scanner. It can be used for multiple time frames, uh, but mainly it's used for intraday because there are other tools available to us for larger time frames that I think do a better job. But when you need a real-time alert, you have to have the radar screen and also if you're looking at pre-market or post-market data that's also where the radar screen really comes in handy so let me show you how to create it using TradeStation and and some of the nuances about it so that you can effectively use it if you have the toolbar open which should be by default you'll see this little icon here the little circle kind of looks like a radar that is your radar screen and if you click on that in an open workspace, then this is going to be your default. And it doesn't make much sense. The first thing you want to do is, is learn how to add symbols. One way that you can add symbols is just type them in. And then it'll bring back the data. You can see the default interval here is five minutes. And it will give us the last and that change, the bid ask, and the volume. Uh, another way to insert symbols is to uh, anywhere in the symbol block right click and do insert symbol list and there is a lot of defaults there that you can use uh, in terms of what you might want to if you're looking like say for the largest five you want the entire let's do all largest five day volume average and then it will ins insert all of them and you can see that it's actually created two columns if you don't like that you can just drag one of them and then it will get rid of those two columns and you can see again it's, it's showing us where the changes are occurring uh, in real time which is really handy and then it also creates a header and you can create your own header just by right clicking on the on the row number and insert a label row create your own and just double click it to rename it you can move these around you can sort them but just by double clicking you can also if you want to set a fixed sort you can right click and uh, do the format page and you can set your sorts here and you can even set the interval of which it does get resorted so as data changes and the sorts change it'll basically go back through and reevaluate it. You want to be careful about turning this up down too low, especially if you have a lot of indicators because it can be resource intensive. Just be aware of that. But that's really not, I mean, this doesn't really tell us as much. What really comes in handy is the ability to throw indicators on here, which in my opinion is probably that the single grace, that with alerts is really uh, where the value comes in, especially for intraday if you're trying to do day trades. Now one thing that you need to do is you'll have to go into your TradeStation account settings and enable a uh, radar screen in order to be able to put indicators on your chart. So to, to insert an indicator and to know if you have that enabled or not, which it's not by default, you'll right click anywhere up here in the, in the headers and you'll insert an analysis technique. Now you'll have that available to you, uh, but what will happen is you won't have all of these different indicators available. You'll have like the high, the low, the bid, and the ask, and, and you won't see other indicators like stochastics and whatnot. So that's what you have to be aware of uh, to know if you have that service turned on. And again, by default it's not, but it's not terribly expensive. and it's really important to be able to have that again especially if you're using intraday signals so I just inserted the stochastic uh, fast but you can see that there's nothing coming up on it and there's a reason for that and this is it this is the one little tidbit that threw me and I had to kind of search and figure out what was going on I don't think they do a good job of explaining it but what you have to do is right click and format the specific indicator which in this case is the stochastic and on the first tab which is the general tab you have to make sure that you're loading additional data 
the reason why is if this isn't checked and you have to be able to go back the number of bars that are required for this indicator okay and if you don't have that then it's not going to show properly if anything at all so it's really important here you can see we've got a average length of 14 so 200 should be more than enough we can even turn that down you don't want it to be too high and if you don't see it and you think you should see it you can always go up here to the view refresh and we might need to highlight the whole thing because some if you don't it'll it'll only refresh that row you can highlight the whole thing by clicking this box up here like you would in Excel alright so it's reloading here and now we can see that the stochastics are coming up so those are two things you definitely want to be aware of uh, you know if you're throwing indicators on here if things aren't looking right there's another thing you got to be aware of there is a limit and this is something I think everybody that uses radar screens will hit at some point because you can never have too many you know too much data and what will happen is I think I'm not exactly sure what the limit is I've, I've seen you know that it, you start to get close to that limit around a thousand I think it might has might have to do with the number of resources that you have available in terms of memory on your computer so uh, I'm not sure if there's a physical limit or if it is more of a limit of the resources of your computer but what will happen is at some point you'll get too many and it's it's the it's the sum of all of your radar screens so I've got other windows with radar screens and if you get I, I'll just kind of arbitrarily throw out the number like anything greater than a thousand starts to become a bit of an issue for trade station and what you'll see happen is you'll get a bunch of uh, errors it'll it'll start to complete like this is showing valid numbers but towards the bottom of the list you'll, instead of seeing loading you'll see error 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 and it just won't it won't ever load so that's the again the reason for that is you might have too many that number seems to be around a thousand and it might be more related to your computer. I'm sure TradeStation can has information somewhere on what that limit is, but just be aware that there's a limit. That's really the key point I'm trying to make. The other thing is you may not always want to see uh, what is going on here, and you may want sometimes them to be uh, different colors. So this is kind of like what we're seeing over here. So I'll show you how to do that let's say we just want to know we don't really care what the overbought and the overbought sold setting is we just want to know what these values are okay so what you can do is you can right click up, up here and you can show hide the plot so we can get rid of the or in this way you're not cluttering up you you just want to see where the percent K and the percent D is and let's say we wanted to make the percent K a different color you can change the background color or the foreground color. Let's say I want that to be cyan and I want the other one to be red. You can format all symbols and then we'll just change the... And now if you have this coded where it, it changed, you can actually change that in the code as well where if certain conditions occur it changes the color. But this will be the default color otherwise. So now we kind of have an idea of what's going on there. The last thing you can do format just like you can an indicator on a chart uh, you could also set alerts and if there's a crossover that occurs or whatnot then you can set these alerts if you will make it a beep or you can send yourself an email and I've got some of these set up where if we have like intraday volatility breakouts that it shoots me an email on which one it is that's one of the big valuable assets of this is if something starts happening in the middle of the day this is the this is how you know and that's you know really worth its weight in gold the the other thing you have to be aware of if you want to be looking at pre-market and post-market uh, how to change the intervals is pretty important um, you can have mixed intervals like if I just wanted just these to be on a daily 
I can go up here and change the interval, same I would on a chart, and I can just change. So now we've got some daily and some five minutes. Some people, what they'll do is they'll take Apple and they'll show the radar screen for four different intervals for Apple. That's another way to look at it. But what I look, what I use this for is to help me identify which markets are actually moving in a specific time frame. To change all of them, you just highlight the whole page and then we go down to one minute. This can take a little while to load. If it does, <clears throat> don't freak out, especially if it has to pull back historical data. So that's one thing, but once it gets going, it's okay. The only time that I've seen major issues with the radar screen is in really, really fast moving markets. They can't keep up. And so what you'll see is it'll start to slow down and then it will basically uh, everything will stop and it'll show loading and it'll catch up eventually but if it can't you might temporarily be disconnected from trade station so that it can reset itself and so those are some things just to be aware of I mean it's every like every application it's got ups and downs to it so I'm just letting you know everything about it one of the things if you're looking at pre-market data or you want to alerts pre-market you need to know how to set that we'll highlight everything again and then we will okay so to set the pre-market data because by default this is just using daily data right now you'll right click on one of them one of the boxes up here and you'll say format all symbols and you can see it's set to intraday. You can change the interval this way as well, but this gives you a little bit more flexibility that you don't see up there. You click this View Customize button, and then you can go down here to Custom Sessions, and then this is where you can have your pre and post market. So now it expands, and if you were looking at this outside of live market hours, now you're going to have the data on a one-minute chart for both pre and post market. But by default, it doesn't do that, so you have to to make sure that you know how to set that if you want to change it for pre and post market. So right click in a single box, format all symbols, and then you can change the interval by hitting the view customize button and then pre and post market. Really, really important step there that you need to be aware of. So that pretty much covers the radar screen and all of the nuances about it. Uh, the reason, again, the reason that we use the radar screen is because not all markets are signaling at the same time, and you don't want to overtrade a single market. And this helps you find your setups. Any indicators that you would use on a chart, you can use on the radar screen as long as you have the radar screen feature enabled. Hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions.